I have made a lot of YouTube videos, over 700 to be specific, but I'm talking about the weird Nintendo Switch accessory ones today. I've reviewed it all, from weird neck braces that bungee cord holds your Switch up in front of you while you're playing, or a more complex, durable wooden one that I had to screw together and accidentally screwed into this very table. But once I was done, I, you could put it under your pillow and then it kinda, you looked up at it and that was the thing. <laughs> But it doesn't stop there. Switch knives, pointless sun visors, and about every kind of Nintendo Switch dock shape you can imagine. But a question I get asked a lot. Okay, with two questions. One, do I actually use any of that stuff still outside of the videos where I laugh at them? And the answer is no. I laugh at all of those for a very good reason. The other question is, okay then, so what Nintendo Switch accessories do you actually use? Which accessories can you not live without? Which ones are the absolute best ones? The Switch is almost five years old, so suffice to say, we've probably seen the best accessories come and go. Well, actually, maybe not, because this released about a week ago. I have been looking forward to something like this releasing for the last five years, and this right here is the best Nintendo Switch controller yet. Actually, I'm making this entire video because of this thing. I needed a reason to talk about it. So we're gonna save it to the end, but there's a couple other things I use for my Switch and I can't imagine ever not using them. This is the best Nintendo Switch accessories. Now look, this might seem like conflict of interest, this might seem a little biased, but if you know me at all, you'll know that the Nintendo Switch Satisfy Grip does not leave my Switch ever. I cannot imagine playing my Nintendo Switch without this grip attached to it. It's so freaking good. Without this thing on it, I honestly feel instantly like I'm gonna get carpal tunnel. My wrists start cramping, it's disgusting. And I tell this story all the time, but when this company first approached me and they wanted to send me their prototype, I refused to even put the prototype on my Switch. Something that the creator of the grip and I laugh about a lot now. <laughs> I was like, why would I need that? Like, this is perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine the way it is. But then the finished model came out and Satisfy sent that over too, and I decided alright, fine. So I threw it on and I never went back. I even have Kim hooked on the Satisfy grip now. She can't play her Switch without it. But I have to say that this video is sponsored by Satisfy, which is a good thing. Trust me, because you're about to get a heck of a deal out of it. <laughs> right now, Satisfy is doing their Prime Week sale, which is 50% off. It lasts up until the 27th of the month. So usually you can use my code beat-em-ups to get something off the grips that's always active, but right now it's already 50% off. I mean, what, do you want it for free? <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably, but that's still really good. <laughs> if you could and you decide to grab one, still put in my code beat-em-ups or and click the link in the description because it still tells them that I sent you. They have not given me anything to say. There is no script. There is no words. I'm literally about to review this thing because it is the main Switch accessory that I can't live without. It would be in this video whether or not it was sponsored by Satisfy. Thankfully, it is. Works out great for me. The reason why I love the grip so much is the giant handles, the comfortable rubber handles on the back of it. I mean, for one, you comfortably wrap your hands around it, but it jaunts your palms out so that your thumbs end up coming in at this nice like 45 degree angle and you just sit super comfortably while you hold it, almost like it's a really long PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 controller. I can't even describe how comfortable it is. It's just comfortable, like the best of the best game controllers in your hands. When you're not using the grip, your palms are right up against the butt of this thing, but the thumbsticks are right here, like right next to where your palms sit. If I was actually to hold the Switch comfortably, it's like this, right? This is so uncomfortable. There is no good way, especially with my giant man hands. You just kind of have to hover the Switch in your hands. It's hard to explain, because if you're used to it, you might be used to it, but as soon as you throw this on, it's like a whole new world. Also, if you hate the kickstand, you never have to use it again. The thing I hate most about the kickstand, other than it flimsily flying off, I'm half worried every time I put it down, it's just gonna collapse. And you have to like, like actually make sure that it's not going to fall over. This thing, you just 
don't have to look at it. There it is. There's a ton of different colors you can buy. I got the see-through one because at the time I had just made this see-through switch. But even once I upgraded to the red switch, I actually still really liked the way this clear one looks. That said, you can get it in white. This is for the switch light. And yes, you can even get them for the switch light. You can get kits that come in these big boxes and have another switch accessory that I can't live without for when I'm traveling the Satisfy Grip case. This case may as well be bulletproof. My friend RGT tested it once even by putting his switch in it and then throwing it off a bridge and it was completely unharmed. A lot of switch cases I've reviewed on the channel, whether they were weird, wacky, had a fun design, they were always super flimsy. This is honestly hard to push in. You have to put a lot of weight on this thing for it to buckle and bend. There's a lot of padding inside. There's apparently another grip inside. I have so many of these grips in my house. This is actually a Switch Lite grip, which would tell me this is actually a case for the Switch Lite. Mine's downstairs, filled with games, because you can shove games in all of these pockets. There's a zip here. I put my charge cord in here for when I'm traveling. You put your Switch and the grip. Obviously, this one's not gonna fit because I'm an idiot and I grabbed the wrong size. The Switch could be in there right now, and you close it with the grip and all, and you're good. Another reason why it's good to get their case is because a lot of Switch cases don't count for this specific grip. This will house everything and it's a nice little size. This is the ultimate one-two combo. If you're not a big traveler, I guess you don't really need to grab the case, although it's nice to have, but this is just necessary. I mean, you need one of these. The Switch shouldn't exist without it. And I mean that in every sense of the word. This is the ultimate Nintendo Switch accessory. If you were to get one, this is the one. And good news, it's the cheapest out of everything in this video. Did you know I have a podcast? I have a podcast. There's a whole channel that houses the podcast. Catch up on all the episodes and we stream Sundays at seven o'clock. The episodes live. We actually record them live. For those thinking, oh, I don't need another gaming podcast in my life. Good news. It's not a gaming podcast. It's actually a relatively short, about 40, 45 minute podcast where we put on a show essentially. And it includes you, the audience. We bring you on. We call you. We play games with you. We just laugh. It's a comedy podcast and we would really appreciate the support. So go check it out. The next Switch accessory I can't live without, and I really, really mean that, is this. As weird as it looks, it's this. <laughs> this is the M cable. I've had it for so long now, I lost the original box that it came in, so you're gonna have to imagine. I've talked about it one time before briefly in my Xenoblade Chronicles remake, remaster, whatever review. Essentially, you plug it into your dock, you plug it into your TV, it's HDMI cord. You also need to plug the USB in somewhere to give it power because this bad boy, this HDMI bad boy needs some juice. It takes your games and it, for lack of a better word or term makes them look better. No matter what TV or monitor you're playing on, but I game on a 4K TV. And one of the worst things about the Switch is so many of the games don't even hit 1080p. Even once you dock them, they're still like 720. And stretching that up on a 4K TV, you get those really rough jagged edges. And this just smooths those out so much, as well as adding in a ton of contrast, a ton of color, blacks, boosting the look of the games. The cable does is it essentially adds anti-aliasing to your games. You can use it on any of your consoles, but I don't think you'd see much of a difference in any of the other consoles like the PlayStations and the Xbox. I'd say this thing is really good for the Switch and then even retro consoles too. If you are looking to use it on those bigger consoles though, it has one millisecond per frame speeds up to 120 FPS. It up converts HD or 4K game content, upscales native rendered resolution up to Super HD at 120 FPS or 4K at 60 FPS. Improves image depth, contrast, and color rendering, analyzes every single pixel and adjusts it for an ultimate image, and performs contextual anti-aliasing, eliminating jagged edges and shimmering textures without creating blurry artifacts. This is so good for Switch because if you've ever played a Switch game or one of the bigger AAA games or one of the ports that come from other consoles, the thing you'll notice is that classic Switch look of things looking rough around the edges, jaggedy, pixelated, maybe even muddy. And this cable goes a long way to clear up a lot of those issues. A lot of games that almost make it to looking good on Switch, this just boosts it the rest of the way. The cable does the work that the Switch and the dock doesn't have to, so it adds no extra pressure on the consoles and it just does it on its own artificially. It's really impressive. It's a similar technology that Sean and I talked about with the Switch Pro, how the GPU in a possible Switch Pro would essentially do what 
this cable does, just artificially upscale to 4K rather than actually upscale to 4K, which is a huge strain. It just artificially does it. Making it so when you stretch up that image of a 720 game onto a 4K TV, this goes to work trying to smooth that out rather than it just being raw on the screen. You get what you're given and it looks awful. But don't confuse it with the M Classic. The M Classic is a USB HDMI, but it's not as good. I mean, this cable, it's $130. It's the most expensive thing in this video by far. It's worth it in my opinion, but it's definitely a luxury item that's not necessary. But the M Classic is still $100, and I don't see the difference that M Classic claims that it does. Fortnite doesn't even look that rough on Switch. Fortnite actually looks pretty good on Switch. I actually have a sneaking suspicion, and it's the same company, so maybe I shouldn't say it, because it might put a bad image, but it honestly looks like they've pixelated the image themselves, and then just shown you the better image on the right, and they've gone, see? It doesn't look like there's too much of a difference. For $30 more, I think you're better off getting the cable, but that's just my opinion. That said, luxury item or not, it's so good. It's not a gimmick. It works. It makes the games look so much better. They pop out of the screen so much more. I love it. All right, baby. If you've ever seen the Xbox Elite controller, this is essentially that, but for the Switch. It's made by Power A, the same company that's made a ton of really neat Switch controllers. They've all been really quality. A lot of them are on the cheaper end, a lot of them on the more expensive end. Power A does a lot of different stuff. The one controller they did before this that would have been in this video if it wasn't for this new thing, there was a wired controller that was essentially a pro controller, but it had an audio jack on the bottom. And it was the only Nintendo Switch controller that had an audio jack, but it was wired. It was also pretty cheap cheap. It was around like the $20, $30 mark. This is $100, but it's wireless. It has an audio jack. So it's the first wireless switch controller with an audio jack. But on top of that, there are so many more features this thing has, and it's heavy, and it's amazing. Just like the Elite controller, it comes in its own carry case. This might also be a little overkill. We are talking about the Switch here, right? A few hundred dollar portable gaming system that isn't really a pro elite, best of the best gaming system, and yet here we are with a hundred dollar controller, a hundred and thirty dollar cord, but... Hey, it is so nice. It feels nicer than any other controller I've ever held. Maybe other than the actual Elite controller, which I do really like the Xbox Elite controller, but this is amazing. Everything about it feels really quality. Oh, I don't even know where to begin. These buttons feel the most different. They feel more heavy duty. Like I actually feel weighted to push in. They're not flimsy like really every other button on anything Switch. Just like the Elite controller, there is a way to take out these thumbsticks because you can switch them with these larger thumbsticks. Not that I know why you would, unless you just have really long thumbs. I've always found the default size for thumbsticks to be pretty comfortable. Oh, this is interesting. So you can actually take off the back paddles if you don't want them and just close it up with a backing pad. And then you just have a nice, comfortable controller if you have no intention of using those. I actually like that. Again, with the Elite controller, you can take them off as well, one at a time, but that's pretty neat. It's pretty heavy, probably probably about twice the size of an actual pro controller. It just looks so nice. So there's a really long charge cord, who cares? Also, an extra faceplate, which looks like it's just magnetic. So I might be able to just snap this one off. And just like that, you got a white one. I know I just unboxed this thing in a video where I'm saying these are the best Nintendo Switch accessories, but I already know on this one. I knew the second I held it. It is the, one of the nicest feeling controllers I've ever held. Definitely the best Switch controller I've ever held. It has an audio point and it's wireless. So it does everything and more. It feels like it's worth $100. If it's worth $100 to you, that's up to you. <laughs> you know, I thought long and hard about what other Switch accessories were must-haves, but I really feel like this is it. You have the grip for when you're playing in handheld portable mode. And then for when you're playing dock, what do you really need other than an extremely nice controller to play with and then a cable that makes your games look and play better. Oh, and if you're traveling, which is another highlight of the Switch, you have the case. This will completely cover you no matter what way you're playing your Switch, how you're playing your Switch, this is it. I've gone through a lot of accessories in my time and anything else was really just a gimmick. Sure, you can attach a giant 
magnifying glass to the Switch screen so you can see it a little better, but why would you? I can't think of anything else. Maybe if the Switch had inbuilt Bluetooth, I could come up with something, maybe a cool headset. I have always hated having to plug in a Bluetooth adapter to get anything Bluetooth to work. I hate it. I hate having something sticking out of my Switch for any of those. I think we got it right here. I think this is everything, and it's definitely everything that I couldn't live without. That said, I'm still gonna buy all the weird, wacky, wonderful, and ridiculous stuff that I buy because I love messing around with it and reacting to it in videos, so don't expect those to end. But hopefully this puts that question to an end. What accessories do I actually use? Also, because the Satisfy Grip is on my Switch in every single video, I very often get asked the question, even though I've talked about it a bunch, what is that thing on his Switch and where do I buy one? So hopefully this video will help tame those questions too. If you want to buy one, again, links down below. This video was sponsored by Satisfy, but really didn't need to be. Don't tell them that though, please. I hope you learned something. Let me know down below what Switch accessories you can't live without and what you think of the ones I picked. And I'll see you in the next video. I have nothing else. I don't have a way to end this. I'm just gonna go. Okay, bye.